So good morning and welcome to the Dynamics 365 Discovery Day. Uh, we're looking today at the Customer Engagement Breakout section. And so today we're going to be looking at a number of things relating to Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement uh, and how that might benefit your business. So let's start today. Um, my name is Nigel Bradley. Um, I'll be walking you through most of the presentation today, but we'll also be having other components as well. So our agenda for this first part of the uh, presentation is around our Power Apps demo. So looking at the what the, the new Power Apps platform and what that can mean to your business and how we can leverage that to enhance features uh, that you may be wanting to use for your particular business. We'll also be looking at the October release. Um, the new release of Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement has now been released as of October and we'll be looking at that new release and giving you some overview of that uh, and also looking at a couple of pieces of specific uh, functionality and demo demoing that particular functionality. And we'll also have some time for Q&A as well. So let's begin. Uh, let's have a look at the Power Apps component of uh, our, our presentation this morning. So I suppose the good question is, what is Power Apps? Uh, and Power Apps uh, has been uh, around for a little bit now, um, but it is something that people are now starting to try and use and, and uh, a feature of Dynamics 365 that uh, people are trying to leverage into their business. Power Apps is essentially the whole platform that Dynamics 365 customer engagement is built on now. And, and that platform also allows us um, to create a, a range of different tools and, and enhanced functionality on top of what is already being delivered as standard out of the box functionality from Microsoft. For example, we currently have out of the box from Microsoft the sales the customer service, et cetera, modules or apps from uh, our licensing perspective. But with Power Apps, we're able to extend that uh, and to, to deliver more functionality on top of the platform that is available through Power Apps. So you can see here that we can easily build fully featured apps uh, with low code or no code at all. Um, it connects into different data sources to on-premise connectors. Um, we can store data in the common data service platform. It integrates with Office 365, Azure, Power BI. But I think the key thing here is that the empower it empowers everyday developers to do more. So citizen developers, those people who are uh, novice developers, those uh, people who are wanting to actually take their skills further and to do more with what skills they actually have, um, this app allows them to be able to do this. Um, IT developers, it allows them to easily and more easily do their job uh, and also professional developers as well. So enabling developers' imaginations, removing technical user interface restraints, and that's really key there, is just to removing the technical technicality of all of this low code, no code functionality. So what are Power Apps? Um, so there are three types of Power Apps, Canvas Apps, Model Driven Apps, and Portal Apps. And we're gonna have a quick look at each of those, but in essence, they're the three types of apps that we can now leverage. Um, and some of you may be using all of those now, or some of you may be using one or two of them now. In essence, anybody who is using the new user in uh, the unified interface, the new version of Dynamics 365 through the sales hubs or customer service hubs are using a model driven app. They're just using the, uh, the pre fabbed Microsoft out of the box model driven apps. Um, but we have the extensions that we're available to now. So let's have a little look at these three types of um, uh, Power Apps apl uh, applications. Uh, the first one is the Canvas app. And um, this is probably what most people think of when they're thinking of a Power App. And this is an extension of what is actually available in Dynamics 365 
that allows us to connect to multiple data sources. So connecting into our Dynamics 365 and drag and drop designing uh, apps for particularly mobile uh, clients for us to be able to do certain other tasks that we normally have to log into Dynamics 365 to do. So it is about creating a mobile first experience. So mobile uh, applications um, with a custom UI. So not looking at what Microsoft have delivered, but being able to customize that and, and really make it fit for purpose for your business. So some examples of use there are around uh, event attendance. So being able to capture attendance at events, um, any type of kiosk style application where we wanted to capture um, information from people on, uh, on mobile apps or, or, or on iPads, etc. Um, things like reception apps, logging in to reception or, uh, or uh, being able to register at receptions. Those types of apps are available through Power Apps now. <coughs> um, leave requests, internal re leave requests, uh, quick notes, uh, and also being able to have things like retail merchandise audits. So that's one real key thing around um, power apps that your business might like to explore uh, is how can we extend from a from a kiosk style to a kiosk style application that we might be able to leverage to get our data into Dynamics 365. The second one is around a model-driven app, and the model-driven app is really around extending the functionality or the apps or recreating apps that are uh, currently in Dynamics 365. For example, um, Microsoft deliver the sales app, the customer service app, but you may wish to have something like a membership app um, that handles all of your uh, members' memberships that could be delivered through a customized, configured, model-driven app. And so these uh, model-driven apps are extensions or additional uh, apps that are available or should uh, can be available to your users that uh, extend your Dynamics 365 capability. So the examples of use there around XRM are uh, new models or modules in Dynamics 365, as we said, apart from sales and service, <coughs> and even industry-specific models, modules. So um, those industry-specific modules, as we talked about, might be a membership, might be some sort of transportation, et cetera. Those, they, those, all those model-driven apps can be, uh, can be configured. The other Power App um, type that is available is around portals. Um, some of you are already using things like ADX Studios. This is essentially what this is. Um, so it is essentially Microsoft Portals with a new designer. Uh, so Microsoft have put their, uh, their, their acquisition of ADX Studios into the fold of Power Apps. And so this really allows you to deliver portals, um, to your customers, to your vendors, to your, whatever associations you have with people um, for whatever function you need. So these um, use uh, common uh, functionality or common uh, layouts to deliver uh, this drag and drop functionality as well. So it's also integrated with external identity providers. So, so you can uh, do author, uh, authorization of, of users so that you can use their Microsoft account, their LinkedIn account, any Active Directory that you actually have, um, all, all of that can be incorporated into these portals. Um, so as you see there, customer self-service portals, and some of you have already got those uh, enabled already and uh, are using those. But this is one of those components that is being enhanced by Microsoft uh, and 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 new functionality is available all the time around different portal functionality. So that is really a look at the particular portal options, or sorry, the Power Apps options that we have available to us today, the Canvas apps, the model-driven apps, and the portal apps. Um, what we really wanted to show you at the moment was around 
uh, a little bit of a demonstration of a Canvas app. Um, so if you have a look at the screen, what you can see is, and this might be familiar to you, it is a standard uh, function, uh, standard page in Dynamics 365, and we're looking here at uh, a reconfigured opportunity to to manage applications for a uh, a loan organisation. So what we're going to look at here is um, a, a loan application app, app built as a Canvas app uh, and feeding information back into here into Dynamics 365. So you can see a standard screen in Dynamics 365 that handles all of that information. What we're going to look at is uh, an app that actually allows us to enter that in a kiosk style way. So let's have a little look at that Power App. You can see um, that that uh, initial screen, let's start our new application. Um, in this case, we've designed a number of different screens in this Power App, and we're able to then uh, move through this as we need to. So adding in data, um, we've got uh, address validation sitting in here as well. So you can see that we've now added that data around the customer information. Let's look at the guarantor information and add that in. What is the information around the loan that we're actually providing to this particular person or that they're applying for um, and the lawyer's information that they may be uh, using. So all of that then comes back into uh, after we submit that information and, and that really is just the, the extent of that kiosk app. All of that information then comes back into Dynamics 365 and you can see that I've got my Dynamics 365 screen open now and I've got a list of my loans. And here is the loan that we just created for Janice Heckenbach. Uh, and <coughs> you can see the information that we entered through that kiosk style Canvas app um, now being delivered back into Dynamics 365. And we can take that information and use it however we want or now continue to use that in Dynamics 365 as we normally would. Um, so let's have a little look at, um, we can see also that it has, has uh, created a loan application documentation. So that's the actual physical document. Um, we've also configured this component in that it allows us to use uh, DocuSign to deliver that loan application document to the person via their email address uh, and allow them to review that and sign that. So let's have a little look at um, that particular component. So in um, that person's or Janice's, uh, in that Janice's email, we can now see that she's received an email from DocuSign uh, stating that she's got the loan application doc that she needs to review. So if that particular person clicks on that to review that document, it opens up the document and allows them to review that information and then to accept that information and to sign that electronically. So once, we, uh, once we've completed that, then that all goes back into Dynamics 365. Okay, so let's turn our mind now to the October release uh, of Dynamics 365. Uh, many of you are interested in what is actually happening for Dynamics 365 in the op in the October release. Um, October release is just the first stage of a whole raft of new functionality that is happening within Dynamics 365, updated interfaces, uh, new features, new functionality um, that is being delivered from October all the way through to February. But starting in October, there is a range of information being delivered or new functionality in, in Wave 2. So what we're going to look at today is um, two items in our agenda for this particular release, looking at licensing changes and also looking at some new and updated features as we just discussed. <coughs> okay, so let's have a little look at the licensing changes. Many of you will be familiar with Dynamics 365 and the licensing component that we actually have. Uh, and this has been in place since 2016, uh, all of the new Dynamics 365 licensing. Um, but many of you will have purchased a plan license. So 
either a plan that allows you to use all of Dynamics 365 customer engagement, all of the modules, the sales module, the customer service module, the project service automation module. You may have purchased that customer engagement plan, or you may have purchased the Dynamics 365 plan that allows you not only all of the customer engagement components, but all of the unified operations and financial and operations components. Um, so what the Dynamics 365 licensing change is that we're moving away or Microsoft are moving away from that plan functionality. So what we actually have here is the ability for us to, uh, uh, to now choose a more a la carte app based attached model. So rather than having a, a license that gives you everything, uh, you will be purchasing the components just that you need. Some of you may have already started to do that because you may have not have purchased a plan and you may have just been purchasing the sales app or the sales enterprise app, sales professional app, or the customer service enterprise. You may have already got these, but moving away from the plan licensing, it is now focusing more on that attached based, app based plan. So um, just as an example here, a single user who might be using the sales component would just purchase the sales, uh, either enterprise or professional license and use only that app. Um, another person may be using the sales app and a customer service app. And so they can, they would need to purchase both of those apps to complete their job. And similarly, if the person needs three apps to complete their job, we would need to purchase the first app and then attach the other two apps to that particular uh, person's licenses. So you can see here an overview of the new licensing structure. There is no plans attached to this. Um, you, For each user, you will go in and buy a full user base license. So a sales enterprise, sales professional, customer service enterprise, customer service professional, field service, project service automation. So you will purchase one of those. That, those numbers are in Australian dollars. And then if you your users require additional modules on top of the one that you've purchased for them, you would buy the attached license pricing in the next box. You also have in the additional licenses, the standard licenses um, so that would be applicable for a device and also the reduced functionality for a team member, um, which is standard and continues as normal. Okay, so that really sums up the changes for the Dynamics 365C licensing changes, really focusing on the removal of the plans and working on the attach model structure. So let's turn our mind to the Dynamics 365 new capabilities. I want to focus on the sales component this morning. Um, there's so many different ways, uh, so many different features that are available in different modules as well. Um, the customer service has its own um, suite of um, changes, um, but we can refer that those changes to you uh, at a later date. I want to focus on the sales module today. Uh, and some of the standard out of the box uh, um, functionality that's been delivered in that particular module. So let's have a little look. And, and as you can see here, this is user user driven um, changes. So uh, users have been able to, for years, been able to provide feedback for Microsoft, and, and this has fed the development of the changes for this particular release. So we're looking at an updated interface. Um, new look and feel, so using the uh, unified interface apps uh, and uh, a little bit different looking than what it normally has been. Uh, simplified lead management, contextual email communication, um, improved or enhanced Microsoft Teams integration. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and then looking at some specific demos around Microsoft car, uh, business card scanning and also Microsoft ProForms integration. So let's make a start. Let's look at the simplified lead management experience. Um, there's a couple of new features here um, that allows us to do 
um, or, or to reduce the data input that we're actually putting in. So first one is around auto-populated of inherited account contact information on a lead. So if I'm um, creating a lead and I'm selecting a contact of Ryan Ray, it will automatically pre-populate um, the existing contact information for that particular lead. Um, so that, that, that just saves us having to repopulate on the lead the contacts information as well as the account information as well. Um, the other process that is on the second um, uh, screen there is around uh, currently or previously when you converted a lead to an opportunity, it automatically created an account, a contact and an opportunity. Uh, in this case now, you get to, with the new functionality being turned on, you're allowed to choose which ones you actually want. So sometimes you don't need a new contact created. Sometimes you don't even want an opportunity created. Uh, so you get to choose which uh, entities or which records you want created at the, uh, at the qualification of a lead. Uh, continuing on with the simplified lead management experience, um, we've also got the ability now to convert across all of the lead notes into the opportunity. So once a lead is converted to an opportunity, it now brings all of the historical information from the lead into the opportunity. So we don't have to go back in to find activities, find notes. Um, they're all brought across into that opportunity for easy use. This is a nice to feature here. Um, previously, when you created an email for a particular contact within Dynamics 365, um, the email screen took over the whole uh, window of the whole browser experience and you were left uh, a little bit in the dark as to what you were actually maybe doing. Uh, the new feature allows that pop-up or that email pop up to sit um, uh, in in a way that it actually sits in the corner of the uh, application and so you can still see the inf uh, the the record information behind it so it's a bit sticky um, and you can navigate between records without losing that email uh, being sitting on that corner so you can keep multiple emails in draft and there is also a new rich text editor for emails as well. Um, a, a, an exciting new feature here is around enhanced Teams integration. Uh, Microsoft have moved away from trying to leverage Teams within Dynamics 365 and more using Teams as a standalone application, but being able to integrate those two applications of Dynamics 365 and Teams in a unique new way. Uh, and the way that that actually happens in now is that you can view Dynamics 365. Once you've created uh, a Teams experience or a Teams channel through the uh, through Dynamics 365 and directly within Dynamics 365, you can now see all of that Dynamics 365 information within Teams. Um, so it becomes a lot easier for your team collaboration around opportunities uh, and within that Dynamics 365 experience through Teams. Uh, so what we're going to have a look at now is the business card scan. And um, this is an exciting component because many people for many years have provided feedback to Microsoft. Please give us um, the ability to scan business cards in rather than creating leads or contacts um, and data entering. So this is an exciting thing because it's now using Microsoft AI uh, and it's leveraging that new technology that Microsoft have and being able to deliver that within Dynamics 365 customer engagement and being able to easily scan those business cards for a lead or a contact. So you'll notice that this is coming soon to Australian region. Um, it's currently only available in Europe and US, but in the next month or two, this would be available in Australia. So let's have a little look at that. So we've got leads here in Dynamics 365. Here's our lead screen. Um, this allows us to now um, create a new lead. 
um, and we can now create a new lead from the quick create menu. So here's our quick create and let's create that new lead here. And initially when we open up the new quick create, you can see straight away that there is a scan business card feature available on the quick create. And one thing I will mention here is this is completely available in the mobile app as well. And within the mobile app, it allows you to open up the camera uh, to open up the camera and to utilize your phone's camera to scan or to take a photo of a business card and and scan the business card through the photo, through the camera. Um, I'm using the web application today. Um, so this allows me to upload a photo into my computer and to scan it through the application itself. Um, so in this case, I'm going to click scan business card. I'm going to navigate then to my particular business card and here's my business card let's just open that and try that out um, so here it is it's now scanned the business card it's got got a record in Dynamics 365 but better than that it's actually brought all of the information um, from my business card onto that now we've created a new lead uh, and now without any intervention um, I now have a new lead in there from a scanned business card and I can now take that lead and use it as I would um, in, in a normal Dynamics 365 perspective, um, but I haven't had to enter all of that um, contact and lead information um, through through typing. So there's, there's the example of the new lead that has been created. Okay, so let's move on. Um, and what we're going to have a look at right now is around uh, an exciting new component of Microsoft Forms Pro. Um, what is Microsoft Forms Pro? Microsoft Forms Pro is an essential, essentially a survey tool. Um, so some of you may use SurveyMonkey or different survey tools, and some of you may have even been using Voice of the Customer um, in Dynamics 365. Voice of the customer has been deprecated and is will be no longer available uh, from next year or later next year. Uh, so this is Microsoft's new answer to the survey requirements of many of its customers. So we can create customer surveys, distribute them through different methods uh, and record the survey results back into Dynamics 365. So what we're going to have a look at today is a specific scenario where we're going to set up a survey in Forms Pro. We're going to have a, and we're going to set up a Microsoft Flow to send out that survey. And we'll, this is the, probably some of the first time that some of you will experience Microsoft Flow. And we'll talk about that. <coughs> we're going to create a lead in Dynamics 365, qualify that lead. And through the Microsoft Flow and the Forms Pro, sending out an email invite to the survey. Um, to that lead or contact that has been qualified. Um, we're going to get them to complete the survey and see then the responses back into Dynamics 365 and then Forms Pro. So let's have a little look in Dynamics 365. You can see the, the apps that we're going to be using and we're going to delve straight, in, straight into Forms Pro here. So in Microsoft Forms Pro, you can see that we can create new surveys and quizzes that we can distribute. And you can see there that I've got a customer survey, satisfaction survey that I've created that we're going to be using here. <coughs> Excuse me. So looking at this particular screen, you can see there that we have uh, a number of different options in terms of creating questions, sending surveys and viewing responses. So let's have a little look at creating the questions. Um, each of these is a page in and of itself, and we can add multiple questions to that particular page. Straight away, you can see that there's a customer satisfaction survey that I've done the header, and I can edit that header, put my own image, put my branding on there, change the name, and, and configure this to be uh, branded correctly to my own, uh, own organisation. Um, we're now going to have a look at the questions that we can add. So you can see here that I've got a rating question. Um, I can add different questions. I can add a multiple choice, a text answer, a rating answer, a date answer, multiple different types, and even down to net promoter scores. So being able to um, capture that net promoter scores, and we'll have a look at that a little bit more later on. And even down to a Likert 
um, gauge um, that we can then pick up that information. So uh, let's let's leave that as our survey with our one question. Let's now have a look at sending the survey, multiple options to send the survey. We can send it directly through emails. Um, so I can don't have to use Dynamics 365, but I am going to use Microsoft Flow to connect this into Dynamics 365. And you can see here, I've got that. I can embed it as a link in a document. I can embed it as a, I can grab the link and use the link however I want, or I can use a QR code. Let's use Microsoft Flow. Um, so you can see here that in Microsoft, oh, we, well, this is the uh, Forms Pro. It's asking me, well, how are you going to send this out? We're going to send it out via an email. Um, and I can then customize that email. I can personalize it for the customer. Um, I can create templates, but I can more importantly, just format that using the rich text editor as I want to. Once I've got my email set up, I can then configure Flow. And for those people who haven't seen Flow, Flow is, in essence, a workflow management tool or an integration tool for some people. <coughs> this allows us to say, when an action happens, then do something else. And in this case, um, you can see at the top when the record is updated of a lead and when it is set to being a, uh, a qualified, and that's the uh, status reason three, then if that's the correct thing, um, then send out the email that I have created for my uh, Forms Pro. I can configure that. I can add extra steps. I can take extra actions on that as well. So if it does come back in as a response, send a thank you email. If they don't send it, if they don't open the email, I can send it out. So there's a little bit of workflow management that I can create in there as well. Um, we also have the ability. So this is now looking at the lead record. So now I created a new lead in Dynamics 365. Um, I'm going to save that particular lead. Um, this is for Janice again. So we've now got our particular lead for Janice. We've got all of our information here. Um, we can now qualify that lead. So we've now got that qualified lead. This is now moved it into an opportunity. Um, and we can now see back on Janice's record <coughs> that it has created a record on the timeline that it has sent out through Forms Pro a survey invite um, to Janice. So what does that then mean? Um, let's have a little look at the activities um, and that, that um, you may be familiar with. Let's have a little look at those activities. And we can see in that activities pane that we have that record of that Forms Pro invite being sent out. Uh, it's now recorded against Janice and um, she will have that email in her inbox. So let's move across back to Janice and we can flick into that particular uh, that particular invite and see the details of that particular invite. So back on Janice's emails, um, we now see that Janice has received that customer service, a customer survey link um, with the information that we provided in the email template. Um, Janice can now click and um, proceed to do that survey and we can now see that she has is filling that in and once she submits that um, we can now see that she submitted it and that's thank you for your response back in dynamics 365 we can now see against janice um, that we've now received the response back um, so similarly if we go back into the activities we can now see along with the invite we can now see the response uh, and when that was come, when that had come back in. So clicking on that response, we can now see the header information around the particular invite, as well as the question responses from Janice. So that's individual for Janice um, and her responses. But what we might want to do is go back into Forms Pro and see an overview of our particular survey uh, from all respondents and from all invites. So. Looking back into that particular survey, we can now see that we've sent out 120, uh, 529. Um, we've got 100 responses and we've got a net promoter score based on the, um, the information that we put on the email, uh, the, or the questions of 28 and we've got a good sentiment. We can also see against this particular 
survey, a snapshot of the responses, uh, and some analysis of that. So 55% uh, of the respondents have expressed a pro po positive sentiment. Uh, and we can see some other information there as well. So let's go in and have a look at the responses. We can see the individual responses plus an overview of the actual responses. So the net promote scores, um, response ratio, uh, average time to complete, uh, and we can drill into individual records to see what those responses for those individual people were. Um, we can also um, then also export that uh, records into Dynamics uh, into Excel. Um, and if you want to do some further analysis there in the Excel version, you're more than welcome to do that.